Good afternoon, colleagues, stakeholders. Um, I'm going to start in a few minutes. I'm just going to give everyone an opportunity just to get in. Uh, we were conducting oversight earlier today, so I'm just letting honorable members have a few more minutes um, just for them to have reached home and for them to be able to log on. Uh, but we are here, we are on standby, and we'll start in a few minutes. Thanks. Thank you, Acting Chair. Uh, Tao, is, has the meeting started or is, is it only me struggling with sound? Uh, no, 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 Honorable Nakwila. No, we're just waiting a few minutes to, for everyone to log on. Uh, you know, we did oversight today, so I'm just letting everyone have a few minutes just to make sure they have enough time to get to their laptop. And then we're going to start. Uh, at the two. OK, thank you. Yeah, we'll probably start at maybe even five past or earlier than that. OK, perfect, perfect. Thank you very much.
Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's Honorable Fistia Hassan. Um, just before I open and start our stakeholder session, I want to acknowledge um, the chairperson who unfortunately has taken ill um, and as a result has asked me to step in for him. Um, so we're just going to keep him in our thoughts and prayers and uh, we wish him a full on recovery. Um, honorable members, um, welcome, welcoming you as well as the department and of course the most important uh, group with us today, which are our stakeholders. Um, this is a stakeholder engagement or roundtable discussion, whatever we want to call it, um, but ultimately it's based on the focused intervention study, which is an assessment of support provided to technical schools in the province. Uh, I'm going to ask the team to please flight the agenda or the program rather for today so that both the honourable members, the department and our stakeholders can see uh, what it is. And then I'm also going to quickly introduce the parliamentary portfolio committee in this process. Um, if I'm correct, the people that we have with us, and I might be putting honourable members on the spot, but if you can, I'd appreciate it. Um, if you can just turn on your camera to say hello so that um, the stakeholders who are with us know who, who's here. Uh, we've got honourable Ramulifo, who's a member of this committee. If you want to just say hi and quickly turn on your camera, um, then I can move to the next honourable member. Good Perfect. afternoon. Afternoon, thanks. Uh, that's member Ramulifo. Um, next up, I think we've got, give me a moment, I'm just expanding the attendees list. So I go in that order. Uh, next up, we've got member Dos Santos, uh, who was also with us this morning um, at the oversight work. If you could just say hi. Afternoon, Chairperson. Afternoon to everyone. Excellent, thank you. Sorry, I'm putting everyone on the spot. I just think it's good to see uh, who we're working with. And um, Member Makubela, I heard him. I just don't see him logged on at the moment. Um, Member Makubela, if I missed you, you can also just unmute and say hi um, so that we can officially begin. I will have then introduced those of us who are... Oh, Dalton, uh, Member Adams is also here. Member Adams, do you want to just say hi as well? Turn on the camera just for our stakeholders to see you. Yeah, I think I'm swimming upstream here. All right, well, we have Member Adams and we have Member Makubela who are also with us. Um, and like I said, I've already registered the apology of the chairperson. Uh, yeah, can we please flight up, thank you, that document? Afternoon, so, afternoon, chairperson. Thank you, thank you, Member Adams. You want to just say hi to our stakeholders? Good afternoon, acting chair yes. and Honourable Makubela and all the stakeholders. I can't put on get on my camera, but it's fine. I'm in the meeting chair. Thank you right. so much. That's okay. fine. Appreciate that. We appreciate that all the same. Um, so with that, I'm going to welcome everybody to our stakeholder session for this particular program in turn. Um, you know, this is a culmination of weeks of oversight visit, um, as well as a number of different um, reports that we've been putting together. You know, this committee has taken a particular interest in the schools of specialization and the technical schools because of the importance of the technical skills and that skills revolution um, that we are attempting to put forward in the country. Um, I see it calls for a silent prayer. I'm just going to take a moment of uh, silence doesn't necessarily have to be a prayer. It can just be um, a moment of meditation. I know there are people who observe different religious uh, uh, inclinations here. So we're just going to take a, a moment to, to maybe just have a silent meditation and then we'll continue from there. Okay, that will be observed. I saw Member Adams unmute himself. He's because he is a bishop by uh, uh, trade as well. So I know that was a moment there for him. Um, right, can we just scroll down so that everybody can see the full on agenda below and then we'll come back up. We're going to be starting today with the presentation by the department. Uh, they're going to address specifically um, some of our questions and what we've been speaking to them about with the FIS. FIS is the focused intervention study. 
Uh, we are then going to move on to presentations by our technical schools who are on the line. Um, I'm just waiting for full on uh, confirmation. You've got the list in front of you and I will acknowledge those of them uh, who are with us in just a moment. Um, and then after that, I think we'll have inputs from all of our stakeholders, questions and discussions. Um, then we'll basically be saying thank you and having a way forward and closure. But if we scroll up before we go uh, into the nitty gritty, for before I hand over to the department, I want to quickly on a high level explain the purpose of today's session and, and really what, what we're doing. Um, so we are the Education Portfolio Committee in the Gauteng Legislature. Uh, we have a few roles. The one is to play oversight over the department and make sure they're doing their jobs. Uh, we are the ones who approve the budgets, ultimately debate, etc. Um, so we have an oversight role, which is the first one, and I think one of the more important ones. But we also play a lawmaking role. We create legislation and other policy positions um, that ultimately become laws of the province and maybe even the country. Um, and then the other big part of what we do are also what's called public participation under which we have public hearings, but we are effectively the link between the public um, as their public representatives, but we are the link between the public and those sort of governmental departments from a legislative perspective, uh, but also from an elected perspective. And part of that process um, is ensuring that we have many of these sort of stakeholder engagements in which we allow members of the public in different sectors to interact with the department. But we also then on a, on a very regular basis interact ourselves um, as a committee directly with, with the public. Um, so part of the, the, the big elements that we were doing, like I said, this term is a focused intervention study. Um, so that is over and above our daily day to day kind of work. We choose different topics. Um, and the portfolio committee goes into quite extreme detail into those issues um, to see where there are gaps in the legislation, where there's need for intervention, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, um, you know, and in a BC before COVID era, uh, maybe even doing benchmarking overseas, trying to ensure that we have the best level of practice. The budget process is also a big one. I, I spoke a little bit earlier to it, um, but ensuring that we have gender sensitive budgeting, for example, um, ensuring that we have budget for a number of different issues. Um, I'm not sure if pr the principal of the school we were at today in City Bang is on the line, but that was a big conversation we had around um, the limits of the budget that schools have, especially technical schools, when there's such um, a high need for very specific infrastructure and very specific machinery. And I think that's something that we need to be focusing in a little bit more on. Um, and then, of course, we, we look at every quarter. I mean, we meet every week, but every quarter we process different reports. Um, and ultimately, the annual report process, which was just, just presented, I think, this week of the various uh, governmental departments in the, in the legislature. So that's a high level of what we do. Um, obviously, there'll be more that comes along as we go through today, uh, but I just wanted to acknowledge and maybe just set the tone for what today's discussion is going to be. Um, of course, our focus really today is less about us as honorable members and less about the department itself and more about the voices of our stakeholders. So I'm going to be um, prioritizing those and ensuring that those voices are elevated. But most importantly, I want to create a space that's safe. So this is a completely safe space to raise um, issues, to raise if you have some criticisms, if you have challenges, if you have positive things, that's also great. But this is a safe space, especially, especially for our stakeholders um, who you now have an opportunity to interact very directly with the MEC, very directly with the HOD, very directly with us. Um, I'm going to acknowledge the, if you give me a moment, the list of stakeholders we know for sure we have on the line. Um, this might increase as we go along, um, but just so that we we are all up to speed and I've just acknowledged everyone. Uh, we have the Equal Education Law Center. Uh, we also have the Equal Education in on itself. The Help a Girl Foundation, Jabulani Technical, Bukhoni Technical, Carol Devetek, Modiri Tech, TS Pretoria Tech. Uh, we have Dinoto Tech. World School Techni oh, I'm bad at Afrikaans pronunciation. World School Technica Springs, and then the same one, World School Technica School Diedrix, uh, Kurima School, AGSA. Uh, we also have Pretoria Dana, and then we have John Foster as well. Can I ask that while we're going through this process, um, if those different people and principals and management from those schools and different groups, if you could just write your name in the chat box with the school that you belong to, then we make sure we've acknowledged everybody and we also, uh, for roll call purposes, uh, will be very useful for us. So you can just say, Fasia Hassan, X school, or this is where I'm from, and then we can acknowledge you, um, <clears throat> excuse me, appropriately. 
sorry if I butchered the name of any of the schools. I apologize profusely in advance. Um, can I hand over to you, MEC, for the presentation from you guys? And then we're going to hand over to our stakeholders thereafter. And then we're going to interact uh, more fluidly after. I also forgot to ask the MEC to put on his camera, but I know he'll do that now and introduce himself. HOD? Chairperson, thank you very much. Uh, the MEC is on leave uh, today, and therefore I am leading the GDE PEC. Um, oh, okay, HOD, no stress. Maybe just when you speak for now to introduce yourself, just turn on your camera, then you can turn it off after and do the presentation. I just want stakeholders to be able to see you for a moment and uh, then get into the nitty gritty. And we're going to be asking. Chairperson, I'm going to be asking um, DDG Albert to lead us in the presentation of the reports. Oh, we have with us a whole lot of managers from the curriculum branch that includes our chief directors for i hope i'm visible chair you are now now we can see you perfect well i i lost you personally but i saw you just a second ago okay thank you very much so we have in the midst the ddg responsible for planning our ddg for curriculum is on leave but while she's on leave we have the chief director for curriculum and innovation and she's new to the province and i'm going to request nadine pote actually to put up her camera so that uh, there's nadine pote uh, just for the benefit of our stakeholders as well chairperson nadine is now the chief director for curriculum in the province just to indicate that nadine comes with a wealth of experience. She started as a teacher, but she was a chief direct. She was a CES for curriculum FET at the National Department of Basic Education when the national curriculum was written. She went on to become a director and then chief director for assessment and examinations in the Department of Higher Education. She's done teacher development and went to become the chief director for uh, curriculum and teacher development in the Eastern Cape province. And she is now recruited into the Gauteng Department of Education to take over and lead us. Uh, Chair, with that having been said, we want to allow Nadine to lead us in the presentation unless you would delegate i know that maybe let me also ask uh, the director for fet uh, because technical schools are in the fet branch chair and in the fet band i'm going to ask as per your request miss bongi Umalo, florence Umalo, who's our director for fet to also switch her, her a camera on for a moment uh, so that um, we can we can see her bongi can you do that please so that or oh, there is some light there that that is not showing but it's fine we can see so bongi is our director for fet chair um, and i thought it was important that those who are on the call uh, know who she is with your permission chair I'm going then to allow to request that we allow the chief director or the delegate to to make a presentation from the department side in terms of how we support technical schools. Um, the, the report has been distributed to all members and we hope that it has been received. Uh, Nadine, please proceed with your permission, Chair. Nadine, proceed. Thank you, HOD. Good afternoon, 
Honourable Chairperson, Honourable Members and Stakeholders and our colleagues from the Department of e Education. Our presentation this afternoon to the Stakeholder Engagement Session deals with the support provided to technical high schools in the province in support of the um, high, technical high school strategy from 2019 to 2024. Our presentation touches the six areas as indicated and I'll start immediately. In terms of the introduction, we are informed by the Education Roadmap, Priority 6 specifically, which speaks to skills for a changing world and meaning that we are responsible for ensuring the development of a skilled and capable workforce to support an inclusive growth path. South Africa is currently experiencing slow economic growth and this is leading to high levels of unemployment and this is partly due to the acute skills shortage. And given the current situation analysis of the technical education um, sector, a concerted effort has been made to support these schools and schools offering the technical subjects. The, the situational analysis indicates to us there's low learner interest, the careers aren't regarded as attractive, there's stereotypes, negative perceptions, there's a disparity between the actual technical education and needs of industry, a mismatch of the learners vis-a-vis -vis their cognitive demands and those of the subjects, the perception that these subjects are only for, or careers are only for learners who perform poorly in the mathematics and physical sciences. And it was with this in mind that the technical high school strategy was developed. In terms of the rules of combination, our three technical subjects each have a three fields of specialization. A learner offers one of these fields within a subject and not all three. And in addition to that, they are civic, civil technology, electrical technology and mechanical technology. In addition to that, it is compulsory for a learner to offer mathematics and sciences. And it could be a choice of the mathematics between pure mathematics or technical mathematics and on the sciences, physical sciences or technical sciences, as well as engineering graphics and design as compulsory offerings together with the uh, technical subjects. The current landscape is that we have a total of 120 schools that offer technical subjects or fields of spe specialization within the technical subject, technical education. We have four schools of specialization, another three uh, schools that expand into um, technical and engineering. We have 11 public ordinary schools that are classified as technical high schools and a further 102 public ordinary schools that do indeed offer technical subjects. If we look at the first category of schools, the schools of specialization, this slide indicates the um, 11 um, schools and indicates that seven of the schools and indicates the particular specializations within a subject that is offered at that school. Just by way of example, if I go down there to Soshanguvi, we will see there in Swanee West, we will see there that um, they offer the um, civil technology, they offer all of the specializations as well as electrical technology all and mechanical technology all, where another school such as Tubukwana below it only offers the specialization of power systems in electrical technology. And then if we look at the schools, the, the other schools offering technical subjects, these are public ordinary schools classified as technical high schools. We have 11 in total. You will see that they are spread across the province. We have, for example, John Forster in Swanee North, um, Denoto in Ekeloni North and Mudiri in Swanee South, just to name the three of the 11 that appear on that slide. Our third category is the other public schools, ordinary schools offering technical subjects. They are not classified as technical high schools, but offer some of the technical subjects. If we look, for example, in um, Gauteng North, we have three schools there that um, offer the three technical subjects or a um, or a sample thereof, not all three of them. For example, Kangala only offers two of the subjects, electrical and mechanical, while um, Wurskul Erasmus doesn't offer electrical technology, so they offer them in different combinations. There in Swanee North, there are five schools. 
in Gauteng West, there are nine schools, a similar pattern. Some of them offer all subjects, all, all specializations, others just one of the subjects, and others may offer two and one or two specializations within the subject. Um, in Swanee South, a similar situation, nine schools there that offer technical subjects. In Gauteng East, 10 schools that offer. In Ekeluni North, it's 10 schools that offer the technical subjects. In Johannesburg Central, we have six schools that offer the technical subjects. You will note here, um, chair members and stakeholders, that you won't always see the technical maths and technical science um, being offered uh, because um, in these particular schools, the learners are offering then um, mathematics and physical sciences where it's not indicated as being technical mathematics or technical sciences. In Swanee West, we have seven schools that offer. In Ekeluni South, another 10 schools that offer. Um, and you'll see in the main, the schools in the in this um, district all offer the technical science and technical maths uh, with along with it and not pure mathematics and physical sciences. Then if we look at learner enrollments, um, the subject civil technology, we will note that across 2019 to 2021, um, we're in grade 10 for the construction specialization, 1054 learners offered the construction specialization within civil technology, those numbers have dropped to 812 in 2020 and 649 in 2021. That just shows that from grade 10, the, um, the rate, uh, the retention rate of those learners offering those subjects. Interesting to note in civil technology, construction was the, the specialization with the highest uptake. If we look at electrical technology, we will note there that electronics was the specialization with the highest uptake, starting with 971 learners compared to the 312 for electrical power and the um, 144 for the digital specialization. And then in mechanical technology, Automotive was by far the more popular offering compared to fitting and machining and uh, welding and metalwork. If we then have a look at the technical high school strategy, which looks at expanding the participation of learners in technical subjects by promoting and strengthening our technical high schools in readiness for a changing world, um, the, a, the shared model um, looks at bringing it together all a variety of stakeholders and role players um, to in an integrated cluster approach to work together from a, a provincial uh, department interface all the way through to a school interface and these partners work together to ensure that um, the learners at who are offering technical subjects do indeed receive quality teaching learning opportunities and resources to pursue these subjects. The key components of the strategy include um, the following, uh, to attract the high potential learners and increase the learning enrollment, to promote the technical stream and dis, um, do away with the negative perceptions, to promote technical subjects for career choices, to improve the functionality of the workshops, for, uh, and through modernization to ensure that they match up with industry practices, increase the human resource capital to actually teach the subjects, secure skills training programs for the, our learners in a variety of learnerships, artisanships, apprenticeships and workplace experience, and to deliver constructive partnerships with industry. Um, the following slides give an indication of the um, implementation to date um, and some of the um, interventions at, at uh, target one component or a collective of components together from the strategy. If we look at this one, we've got the attracting high potential learners, promoting technical stream and promoting the subjects for career choices. We'll see there as a collective, the implementation to date um, has um, the importance of the technical stream and the career pathing has been emphasized in the life or the teaching of the life orientation curriculum. There have been exhibitions and career advocacy um, opportunities. Um, a, a high schools in Darbo was hosted, career advocacy program, advocacy for learners to attend the uh, focus weeks and awareness programs on science and engineering and advocacy for bursaries for technical subjects 
uh, for learners from disadvantaged um, communities, and these have been made available through the likes of CESL, ESCOM, and um, SAA. Um, this particular slide speaks to just the technical careers, where um, the implementation to date has looked at promoting the technical subjects, and applications have been received from high schools who offer uh, these subjects to increase the number of specializations at the school. In 2025, schools applied, and in 2021, seven schools. And um, the FET directorate, headed by Director Kumala and her team, is, is supporting the piloting of the technical vocational stream in the three stream model with the purpose of increasing the participation rate in our technical subjects in the FET and in and introducing an increased pipeline for these learners to be channeled into, and also the Umpakati training and development plan uh, to train 50 learners in plumbing towards an artisanship in uh, the plumbing specialization. If we look then at the next slide, which looks at improving the functionality of workshops and the learning environment over here, um, resourcing of schools of skill, technical high school and identified MST schools uh, to modernize them, ensure that they've got modernized equipment, machinery and tools. In 2019, 70 workshops uh, in 26 quintile one to three schools were resourced through the MST grant and additional budget. Um, of these electrical technology were 20, mechanical technology 30, civil technology 20, and in 2020, uh, 38 mechanical technology workshops in the 26 schools were resourced through the um, conditional grant and the additional budget, as well as 23 electronic um, electrical technology workshops. And so, Chair, the rest of the slides then speak to the detail of th this, um, the improved functionality and the improved learning environment. Um, continuation here that um, in 2019, um, 26 quintile one to three schools were also resourced for civil technology in 2020 21 schools to civil technology workshops were resourced and in 2021 um, 90 mechanical technology workshops in 38 schools were resourced with uh, critical tools and machinery 15 schools offering electronics were also supplied with tools and equipment 30 schools were supplied with tools and equipment for power systems and eight schools were resourced for um, digital. If we have a look at the next slide, which continues on the functionality and improved learning environment in terms of the important consumables required for the practical assessment tasks, the following was procured through the LTSM budget. In 2019, 72 workshops were um, provided with consumables. In 2020, 74 workshops were provided with consumables. And in 2021, 102 workshops were provided uh, with consumables to support the implementation of that practical assessment task, which makes up um, is, is a compulsory component of those subjects. If we look at uh, improving the learning environment alone, um, the undertaking of an audit to determine whether technical workshops can be used as training centers. And this is currently in progress to determine the status of the infrastructure, the resources and the teaching personnel available to undertake uh, such a task. If we look at the human resource capital and um, the teacher development initiatives conducted to date, uh, addressed high quality skills and content training from 2019 all the way through to to date and focused on the following, that is the three technical subjects, mechanical, electrical and civil, and the areas of specialization within each of those subjects as indicated. And if we continue looking at human resource capital, bursaries are being offered through the GDE Teacher Development Directorate and the ETTP CETA for the upskilling and reskilling programs uh, for technical subject teachers. In 2019, 40 teachers a, a a attended CETA accredited training in electrical skills in 2020, 62 mechanical technology teachers attended training. In 2021, the, um, the, the training has been scheduled and planned for, for this current academic year. 58 teachers were trained in civil technology um, during July 2021. And the GDE has offered bursary opportunities to reskill and upskill teachers in the technical vocational subjects. And 
the ETTP CITA has continued to fund training for technical subject uh, teachers all in all three subjects across the areas of specialization and the tenders to appoint the training providers closed in March of this year. If we have a look at securing skills training programs for learners into learnerships and workplace experience, um, in identifying the skills training opportunities in programs in 2019-20, learners offering electrical technology graduated in television and cell phone repairs skills programs with Samsung. Uh, Ten learners from Katlehong Technical High School qualified as artisans in automotive funded by, by Mercita and Umpakati Training Development um, Plan trained 50 learners in the plumbing. Um, and that is managed by an MOU signed with, G with us at the GDE. If we look at securing the skills programs for the learners and developing constructive partnerships in industry, um, CETA involvement in the technical high schools and the schools offering technical subjects. Uh, through this apprenticeship opportunities have been availed to learners of Katlehong, Rega Park and Hoer School Technis Tainer. Um, and attract industry support to secure and amplify learnerships, workplace experience, work integrated learning and sponsorships. Here specifically Samsung Skills Program provides workplace experience for electrical technology learners. Um, there has been a bit of a delay of that due to the COVID-19 pandemic and then to extend the curriculum to increase exposure to areas of specialization. Um, the Electronics Club, in collaboration with the Cyborna Discovery Centre for Grade 10 and 11 learners, strives to ensure that the skills in electronics are developed, and that has also been delayed due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. If we look at the con continuation of partnerships, then uh, we have established partnerships with the Impakati Development and Training, as already indicated, um, and one of their areas is to create awareness and advocate career pathways in plumbing specifically. All nine schools in the province offering the plumbing specialization have been adopted for direct on-site support to schools. And I can report that they're about to embark on the um, on-site training of learners, um, uh, which will continue now in September. And this partnership is will create a pipeline for nurturing the talent of these learners in that area. The Plumbing Institute regulating body and, and the Institute of Plumbing SA will accreditate the, accredit the learners for this course. And Pakama Research and Development have committed to train 10 learners in the welding in welding skills. And this will also come in shortly now at the start of term three. Continuing with the constructive partnerships, um, Pakama Research and Development have assisted 20 schools with repairs and maintenance in their workshops. Ford South Africa has donated 28 motor vehicle engines to assist with the automotive specialization. The Austrian Department of Education has trained eight teachers in civil technology and the South African Capital Equipment and Export Council has supported five schools with career awareness programs and appointed retired artisans to assist teachers in the workshops. Also to do with constructive partnerships, schools have partnership partnered with business industry partners directly supporting technical high schools. Toyota South Africa supports Jabulani and Pretoria with resources and teacher training. BMW South Africa um, supports Soshanguvi, Tobohwana and Unkwele. Mercita is supporting Katlehong and Rega Park. And Mercita is on hand at all the launches and initiatives, careers, exhibition, expos, etc., related to our technical high schools. In the partnerships and the accredited multi certification programs, the business involvement uh, towards part qualifications is the Impakati training and development um, with the Institute of Plumbing South Africa, which will be um, certificating the learners that we've indicated will be trained through that partnership in the nine schools. Uh, that uh, Training kicks off now in September, and they have committed to sponsor 10 learners to go on training in welding as well. That's the Impakati Training and Development. And then in, uh, finally, in terms of challenges and mitigation, um, there's inadequate funding um, to improve the technical environment and execution of, the, of quality practical assessment tasks. 
and through partnerships such as Pakama, and um, we have been able, who maintains our equipment in our schools. This has assisted um, to um, avail uh, services we would not otherwise be able to afford uh, due to the budget constraints. In terms of burglaries and vandalism at the schools, um, schools have been have secured the workshops and with alarm systems, CCTV systems, uh, but break-ins still persist. And thirdly, the size of the workshop is not always suitable to offer certain subjects and specializations, and the GDE infrastructure unit will explore solutions and options to refurbish and or extend um, we, uh, or build new workshops for this. Fourthly, insufficient capacity in the district to provide effective support to the technical subjects. Here the appointment of uh, additional su district subject advisors um, is being considered. Number five, low learner enrollment in the technical subjects and um, then there's a high dropout rate of the learners offering technical maths. The drive for career advocacy and awareness programs is being done to motivate the learners and the introduction of the practical assessment task, a new innovation from the Department of Basic Education, will also assist with the technical mathematics to make it a more practical um, subject for learners offering technical subjects. Number six, aging teachers and the lack of experienced newly graduated teachers. Here additional support via uh, bursaries uh, for graduates. And number seven, multi-certification programs are extremely costly and there is no budget to execute these. And the, uh, we are fortunate to have partners sponsoring the multi-certification, for example, for the plumbing, Bakama, but the department will have to look at ways and means of making funding available um, to, um, to maintain this going forward. Thank you very much. Chair, that would constitute the, the report from the department. Um, as we know, Chair, one of the challenges that had been was that previously before the MST grant was consolidated into one, we used to have a math and science grant and we had a technical schools recap grant. And now the biggest challenge that came with the consolidation of those two grants suggested that the say there was firstly a reduction in the amount of money that was provided for, but secondly, there was a, a as a result of that, we then had to spread the resources thinly. And that's why in this particular area, one of the key points we are making is how we have gone to industry partners to strengthen our support for the schools. Uh, that is our submission, Chair. Uh, we will wait to hear what our colleagues from schools would be saying in respect of this. Thanks, for, thanks, Chair Pearson. Uh, thank you, HOD, and to your team. Uh, it's appreciated. Um, to all of our stakeholders who are with us, we're now going to move on to the third part of our program, uh, which is really why we are gathered here right now and today, um, and that is really to hear from you um, and to hear from the different technical schools that we have um, been visiting over the last few weeks. Um, so look, in no particular order, we can work with the order that's here. Um, we'll go through it, and then if we miss anyone along the way, we'll make sure we hear from them at the end. Uh, but really, we want to give an opportunity for everybody um, to have a say, even if it is a verbal um, presentation. Some might have a slideshow, some might not, um, but we would definitely want to at least, in the, in the very least, hearing uh, verbally um, from you. Uh, Piello, you can keep flighting it. That's not a problem. I think it's useful to flight the, the thing as we speak. But uh, let's see, do we have uh, Dinoto Technical Secondary with us? That's Dinoto Technical Secondary. Do we have a representative from that school here? Okay, if not, that's fine. Um, If we've missed you and uh, you need to come in later, you can also just write in the chat box or we'll try and make a note of it and then actually push it through. Uh, let's move to the next school. That's Word Technisa. Let me, let me help you, Chair. Please. 
please. I'm not going to. Were, were technical school springs. There we go. You can say old Afrikaans ones for me. And you know, the irony is that I did Afrikaans uh, first additional and I used to be able to do this, but I guess without enough practice, uh, one is very much not good at uh, those things. I'm sure there's many uh, teachers currently and previous teachers who are probably pulling their hair out because I'm that kind of learner who, who forget. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's see. Is there anybody from the Springs uh, Technical School who is with us? All right. I'm going to try a different approach here. Um, instead of reading out each school, what I'm going to do is uh, those who are with us in terms of schools, you can raise your hand uh, with the raise hand function or unmute yourself, say your name, and then tell us which school you're from. Um, and then we will do a check, uh, checking exercise to see who we've already heard from and who we haven't, uh, which I already see is working better than what I initially tried. Um, Mr. Anton Strauss, we will note you first uh, in, one, in one moment, and then I'm going to note... Uh, uh, Mr. Temba Nguenya, and then we'll get uh, Mr. Voter Enslin. But let's start with you, Mr. Strauss, and then just tell us which school you're from so we can note it appropriately. Thanks. Thank you very much, Chair. I appreciate the opportunity and all protocols observed. I'm Anton Strauss, the principal at the uh, Wurtechnische School in Diedrichs in Krudersdorp. Um, and um, thank you very much again to the opportunity and to all the new members as introduced by the HAD to the Housing Department of Education. Welcome and thank you very much for the opportunity that you also bring to us. Thanks. You can, you can go ahead. You can uh, tell us a little bit about the school, the presentation, some of the things you might want to raise. Okay, Chair, I'm just going to try and... Um, get my presentation to show. Um, I hope I get it to manage it. Okay, you should be able to now because PLO has stopped sharing on his side. So we'll give you a minute to try and figure that out. Just try again. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, Mr. Temma Nguenya and Mr. Enslin, could you keep your hands up? You don't have to put them down just yet, uh, just in case I don't note you properly. Yeah, keep them up for me. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Strauss, if you're having major difficulties, what we can do is if you email us the presentation, we can flight it on our side, um, but I can still allow you to uh, to keep trying. I'm going to Jean, just um, speak off the slides just to save time. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Okay, but definitely please send us your presentation because it's of value to us and I we would will, also like to go through that. Thank I you. Will, I will definitely do that, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Chair, um, just to um, then start it off um, as an introduction. Um, the school, as I said, is in Krugersdorp, and we're at the forefront of implementing the ministerial three three um, streams model. Um, the school lies claim that we're the only full technical high school in South Africa offering pure technical curriculum from grade eight to grade twelve, because in the FET phase we're offering all the nine subjects um, or specialisations. And then in grade eight and nine in the GT phase, we are also pilots for technical vocational. So all learners from grade eight to 12 is currently doing technical subjects at our school and only technical subjects. Um, the successful piloting of the technical subjects, um, especially the vocational in grade eight and nine is one of the areas. And tomorrow, um, for next year, sorry, um, also the piloting of robotics and coding as from 2022 is part of what we consider to be some of the success stories in the school. The processes that we've um, completed also included um, or includes the name change of the school to make it more accessible and to be evident of transformational and redress challenges that's overcome over the years, which will definitely be necessary as I do think where um, Technis is becoming a bit of a problem more than what we would recognize. Then, the fastest growing technical school in Houting, as we've almost doubled our numbers in the last three years from being a very small school, 480 learners, to approaching um, the 1,000 learners in 2022. 
Um, the only urban school to introduce an additional first additional language, Setswana, um, to allow access to the technical field of study for learners from all communities, regardless of language barriers. And also the school's inclusion um, policies rather than exclusion policies um, allows learners with um, limited or learners with barriers to learning to also have been included, including learners with autism. Um, we've also been at the forefront of informal twinning with neighboring schools in our community. And with that being said, um, thank you very much to the Department of Education and especially the Housing Department of Education for looking after the school. I think we have been as a Section 21 school and a Quintile 5 school, um, we have been on the receiving end of equipment during this year and we've been allowed to build six new classrooms to accommodate the expansion. And I do believe the department is looking after the school in, um, in a wonderful way. But there are a few things in which the assessment of the support of technical schools um, that we need to address and that we need like to point out. And we first found that there's a disjuncture between the intention and implementation of the reintroduction of the technical subjects. Um, and that made support inadequate. And I think it was outlined by the previous speaker quite well. Um, expectations were not met in terms of HR challenges and procurement and recapitalization processes that did not place, as they took place and reached all the schools and obviously funding running out, as the HOD also pointed out. And then the best intentions did not necessarily produce the best results, as highlighted in the number of um, challenges and misconceptions that the technical schools ran into. Those would be um, starting obviously with funding, which I think was a major reason why a lot of schools dropped subjects over the last few years, um, because they simply could not continue to um, afford it. And because of the tremendous strain that the addition of the workshops being fully functional would then place onto a school's budget and also the department budget. Human resources, the balances between the legislative requirements and then for occupational health and safety, industry standards, but also to the norms and standards for education is still not aligned. And then the training and development, the provision of educators for the, for the BTEC degrees um, happened to slow and then result in an overstay of artisans and engineers um, for the expertise levels, resulting in size compliance issues and then eventually going over into salary issues when it comes to the, the um, appointments. And the sad thing is that you might have excellent educators, but you would lo be losing them um, because they can only be paid at a metric level because of certain policies. And even though there would be training opportunities available, they would not be open to SGB appointed staff members as um, a lot of these um, training programs are open only or bursary schemes are only available for departmentally employed employees. Um, then um, also in terms of maintenance and resourcing of workshops, as a capital expenditure, the cost and maintaining of workshops has been a leading cause of um, a lot of schools finding it difficult to cope in these changing environments. Um, LTSM provisioning and procurement as um, stated, but it not being aligned with curriculum processes um, schools, for instance, cannot place their orders for um, PAT requirements um, before we know what's in the PAT and those processes has been um, delayed or not been aligned in all cases. Peripheral implications um, that I think a lot of times go amiss is the fact that all learners in technical high schools do physical science, mathematics, engineering and graphics, which is a major difference to your mindset and, and expenditures uh, because um, physical sciences has also got practical components that now is extended to all the learners in the school. Engineering, graphics and design being expanded to all the learners in the school is again um, putting a, a question mark on the availability of resources and um, although it's necessary it's something that we need to also look at in terms of subject specialists needed in these compulsory subjects. Another area um, that was questioned or that was raised in the briefing was the area of the impact of the categorization of schools. Um, the provisioning in terms of norms and standards um, 
um, needs to be aligned with the curriculum implementation. And with that, it's simply a matter of certain expectations were raised in schools being and becoming technical high schools, but then eventually that does not match up in terms of the norms and standards for implementation in the schools. The re recognition of technical schools, of schools of specialization, which was also an expectation and has not yet been able to fully transform or fully um, find its way through to a lot of the schools. And the re-establishment of industry, industry trust in technical schools as the provider of future artisans, technicians, technologists, engineers, has not been transparent in terms of MOU services and agreement. And I'm just saying that from the perspective of a section 21 um, quintile five school um, being also the understanding of the fact that we need to first look at the schools that would need those needs first. But at the same time, a lot of the schools have been um, wrongfully or uh, been placed in certain categories and boxes. And that is creating a little bit of a dilemma for the schools. Capacity buildings for the technical vocational and the management structures thereof. A lot of the time, we spend a lot of time on preparing educators, um, but the managers for those educators need equal training and capacity building programs for them in order to then do and maintain the controls that is needed for them to implement. Chair, in um, closing the recommendations, I think it's um, through the offices of the legislator and with the department, we need to level the playing field as to speak in terms of policy alignment across the system. We need to address things in terms of HR provisioning, norms and standards, um, resourcing and funding, the classification of technical schools as um, schools of specialization, because that will then speak again to funding and, record, and again speak to provisioning norms, etc. And then the classification and even the renaming of technical schools, possibly to schools of engineering, to um, resolve the confusion that's currently um, being um, caused by people thinking that technical school has got a limited scope of applications. Um, and also to break maybe the um, ideas that people will have that technical schools have re evolved and has actually now found their place. Um, just the last thing that we do find a little bit of concerning is that there's a big con the, um, confusion, especially, especially if we look at the documentation in terms of education between the words occupational and vocational, and um, which as it affects the technical schools and us having piloted the vocational section of it, there's still a lot of confusion with occupational, which is just something we need to bear in mind when we move forward with the implementation of the vocational um, curriculum and implementation in other technical schools. Chair, thank you very much for the opportunity, and I have both been of some assistance in um, this forum as well. Definitely, Mr. Strauss, thank you very much. Um, I've, uh, or rather, Piello has put his email address in the chat box. Please, please, please email us your presentation. I think some of the recommendations uh, or suggestions you've made are very useful, and I think it's something we need to look at. Um, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Let us now move to uh, Mr. Temba Nguenya, and then when you introduce ourself, uh, yourself, you can also just tell us then uh, which school you're from. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Temba Nguenya. I'm from Jablan Technical High School. I'm the principal of Jablan Technical High School. Uh, I need to say thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I also need to say uh, greetings to uh, the HOT and our district director, Mem Seposiate, and all protocols observed. Um, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, Jablan Technical High School um, is based in Soweto and is servicing uh, uh, Soweto, uh, Tsipisong, uh, Slovo, Pramfisha, and all other areas. The uh, learner enrollment is uh, started from 680 to uh, 10, 1085. 
Um, the subjects that we are offering is English first additional language, uh, Isizulu, Isikosa, and Setswana. Uh, in the African language, we feel that uh, it is disadvantaging other lin uh, learners or languages like Sesotho, Suvenda, and Shizonga uh, because we're based on only on Isizulu, Isikosa, and Setswana. Uh, we're hoping that maybe if we could uh, introduce English as a home language so that uh, the other learning areas can be taken at first additional language, uh, and then that would uh, encompass or accommodate other languages as well. The technical subjects that we're offering are electrical, civil, and mechanical. In electrical, it's power systems and electronics. Uh, civil, it's woodworking and construction. Mechanical, it's fitting uh, and turning, automotive and welding. Um, like in the previous uh, uh, school, Mr. Strauss has indicated, the issue of the post provisioning for technical has always been a challenge, and I've raised this on, numer on numerous occasions. Uh, the issue of the ratio, uh, it also becomes a problem, especially in, in the technical uh, subjects where it's, it has to be uh, 1 is to 15, you find yourself uh, to have 1 is to 27, 1 is to 30 in a workshop, and they uh, were actually not complying with norms and standards and occupation and safety standards. Uh, we're violating that. Should there be an accident uh, in the work workshop, then uh, the school is going to find, ourself, uh, is going to find itself in, in deeper uh, water. Uh, in terms of uh, um, the, the resources I've indicated to the team that came in uh, that the uh, resourcing it becomes a problem in terms of the pet uh, where you find we find ourselves having supplied with a material that does not comply with the pet uh, for that current year uh, as an institution where to buy we end up buying a, a lot of a, what called pet material and it costs the school a lot of money um, the the amount that we're supposed to be getting uh, from the department is so little. Um, the issue of the perception of the school being a vocational is also one of the key areas that is killing the institution where we find ourselves having uh, to underperform. Like this year, we find ourselves in Section 58B uh, as a Section 58B school uh, because precisely because of the issue of the perception where most of uh, the community members, even district officials, even principals uh, of the feeder school, they are uh, having an inclination that uh, Javelin Technical uh, is a vocational school and all those learners that are struggling uh, in terms of maths and science, then they've got to be uh, channeled to Javelin Technical. Uh, we therefore of the perception that if we could be allowed to uh, administer a psychometric test, uh, at least we could get uh, learners that are um, uh, having the skills or the capability of doing math and science. Um, but then it's also indicated that for us to qualify for a, 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 an SOS, we've got to uh, attain a particular percentage like 80 and above, and we find ourselves not able to maintain that, uh, that 80 and above. We've tried in the past, but then we've had a, a lot of uh, challenges in as far as that is concerned. Now, if we could be allowed, uh, in fact, all schools, uh, technical schools, if they could be turned into a, an SOS, and that would actually alleviate a lot of pressure. Um, the committee that came in, when they visited even the workshops, uh, the workshops were actually not in a good state. They were dirty, I must admit. And uh, we find ourselves not able to uh, maintain those workshops in terms of cleanliness. Uh, we've got about uh, four GAs. One is working in the admin office. Um, uh, and then... uh, sorry, there's somebody who's, an, who's not muted and they are disturbing you. Sorry, sorry for that. Can can we okay. all unmute, please, please? You please, mean please. mute? Can, yeah. Can, you take can, a look. Can we all can we all mute, please? Thank you. Okay, Thank I'll you. also monitor it as well. You can continue, Mr. Ngwenya. Thank, thank, thank you. Um, as I was saying, um, 
the number of GAs that we are having at this institution, we have about three uh, that are working in the garden, and they're also responsible for cleaning the workshops. And uh, we fought even the other day uh, where I indicated to them that this is part of their responsibility. They are responsible for the workshops. They are responsible for the 55 classes. They are responsible for the yard. And the yard is so enormous. Uh, each time they don't work in the yard, and then we they find ourselves uh, they find themselves at loggerheads with me uh, because of the issue of the maintenance. So now, uh, if we could be turned into a special school, then at least we could have more personnel uh, in terms of grounds uh, groundsmen. So it's one of our pleas that we're actually requesting, and if we uh, HOT could actually assist us in terms of that, um, yeah. Uh, we yes, we do have a business partner that is assisting us a great deal in terms of uh, in, uh, supplying us with engine. In terms of uh, giving learners the skill, uh, it's Toyota, as you have. It has actually been alluded to. Uh, we are so grateful for that. We wish and we would welcome other companies uh, to be on board so that uh, they assist the school in terms of placement uh, after uh, metric. Uh, so that they get absorbed into uh, the companies as well. The issue of the maintenance of the machine, it has always been a problem. It has always been an issue. Uh, like we've got the lathe machine. We also welcome the supply of the department uh, recently. They've supplied us with a new uh, three new lathe machines. Uh, and those, I think, they are of a good quality, but uh, there the, are those uh, mach lathe machines that have actually been supplied in the past, uh, which were of a poor quality and uh, they just broke. But then the issue of maintenance then becomes a problem. The companies that are responsible for the maintenance, they charge uh, a lot of money. So we also wish that we, if we could have a special budget in terms of maintenance of machines, uh, all the workshops, uh, they've got machines and they all uh, they all need maintenance. If we could have that special budget and it, that would come, uh, that would greatly assist us because the amount that the department is giving us uh, in terms of maintenance, uh, it's all, always not sufficient. Um, basically, that's all that I wanted to say uh, in terms of the technical. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nguenya. Those are well noted and we appreciate your input. Um, I think the next person I had noted was uh, Mr. Vuta Inslin. Um, and then you can also tell us which school you're from and I'll hand over to you. Thanks. Good afternoon, Chair, and all the uh, important people present today all uh, observed. Um, I'm Wouter Enslin. I'm the principal at Pretoria Technical High School. We are celebrating our 115th birthday this year, which we feel is a great achievement. The school has achieved many highlights in my career of the last 30 years at that school. And um, I don't want to repeat what the previous two speakers said, so I think I will just focus on the areas which they have not mentioned. Um, if you allow me, Chair, I also just want to say I'm the Vice Chairperson of the National Association for Schools of Technology, which represents most of the technical schools in South Africa. And I think the major um, concerns that we have, uh, if I can summarize it in three points is number one post establishment for technical schools which is not in line uh, with what policy says and what the previous speaker says was the national occupational safety act says and the second one is that um, the funding of technical high schools is a big problem uh, and i want to thank uh, gde for really helping us in the last couple of years with um, material for pets, uh, resources as far as machinery with the recapitalization program. We've really uh, benefited a lot from um, what was given to us. But the last point I feel um, if you speak to any principal at any technical high school today is the admission policy for learners coming from 
grade seven to a technical high school, whether it's a fully fledged technical high school or a school of specialization. Um, most of the learners that come to my school, I'm in Arcadia, are not technical inclined. They come to my school because they live in the area and we are basically becoming a community school instead of a technical high school. We offer all 11 technical subjects, but my admission policy is basically the same as a public ordinary school, which means that my, my dropout is bigger and, and one of the previous speakers showed the slide there, the dropout rate uh, in some technical subjects. And the reason for that, I believe, is because the learners that come to our schools are not technically inclined. They come to the school because they live, basically live in the area. And with the admission policy, we, we cannot show them a way. We can't have an admission uh, screening test or anything like that to make sure that we get the right learner at our school. So my three points to summarize is basically the post establishment, the funding of technical schools and the admission a policy needs to be looked at that a school with all 11 technical subjects must have some kind of a system where we can recruit the learners that come to our school that we make sure our metric results are good. That is all that I can add to which the other speakers did not add, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Insulin. We appreciate that. Um, also noted, um, we also don't mind if you repeat some of the things that other people would have said. Um, like I said earlier, it's a safe space. We want you to be able to ventilate your issues and to tell us what's going on. Um, but also some recommendations that are also quite useful for us to think about around the admission policy and, you know, some of those other things, which I also think are policy positions that we need to look at. Thank you. Um, Thank you, ma'am. Can I, sorry, can I then just add while you're giving me an extra minute? I think what will be wonderful for uh, uh, an idea that I want to leave on this platform is my school is, for instance, situated in Arcadia, which is three kilometers away from the University of Pretoria. We are four kilometers away from UNISA. And we are about, I would say, eight kilometers from Tuani University of Technology, which makes my school ideally placed for a school of specialization for university engineers that, you know, I get so excited about it when I think that um, given the opportunity to recruit learners to my school for an engineering career and partners form partnerships with UNISA, we currently do that with robotics, et cetera, but expand it to an after-school partnership where people get to know that Pretoria Technical High School is the feeder school for University of Pretoria, UNISA and TUT. Currently at UT, most of the uh, engineering students that attend that uh, faculty of engineering come from my school. But I think if we make it official, like I think Mr. Strauss said, that PTHS should be a school of engineering, uh, sending learners from my school to Takis or UNISA or TUT. Um, it will give us a much uh, better um, position to say now, this is not a school for learners with learning difficulties in math and science. This is a school where we train learners to become engineers, to go to Takis to study civil engineering, etc. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Insulin. Also very important and something we've been thinking about around different partnerships, strategic ones. Um, and I think there's a huge, huge, huge opportunity for us. I think Member Makubela would have said it in the past um, around partnering with universities, especially on these technical skills. Thank you. Um, Mr. Martin Duplessis, you have the floor. Uh, good day, Madam Chair and colleagues. Um, I'm Martin Duplessis, principal of HTS Pretoria Taina. We are situated in the west of Pretoria and not financially 
strong community, but uh, our school, uh, what we try, and if I listen to my peers, uh, I think uh, it seems like all the technical principals has a meeting, had a meeting before this one to say the same things, because I think that is the worry of all of us uh, to, to, comp uh, to, to say the problems that we have. Firstly, I want to thank the uh, um, GDE for the equipment they, they uh, distributed through the technical schools. Uh, it, it came in help handy. Uh, main thing, maybe one or two things like the uh, um, compressors we received. Uh, it's nice, the compressors is there, but after six months, that the compressors, compressors must uh, be uh, um, checked. And uh, those compressors do not have, for instance, uh, a label on. So no company want, uh, want to give us a certificate for um, the compressors to be safe, to declare it safe, stuff like that. But it helped and uh, the work can be done. Uh, just a few things from our side. We try, we had uh, um, established um, partnerships with companies like FNO Training Center, uh, where our learners uh, gain from, from grade 10, for instance, they can every holiday, instead of sitting in front of TV or running around in the, in the street or in the city, uh, they can go and start their artisanship there for free. Uh, and uh, grade 10, 11 and 12 every holiday. And at the end of grade 12, it's more or less six months and then it's only the year practical and the, the learners can get the red seal. Uh, so uh, it's a quicker way for the learners to, to make them ready for the adult life. We are busy uh, establishing a partnership and a training center on our school with aviation to just bring aviation to the west of Pretoria, because uh, in the west of Pretoria, there's no opportunities for the learners and the community in aviation, and especially in the technical part, uh, like building the black boxes, that kind of stuff. We were adopted by Nissan a year or two ago. Uh, that went, uh, that is a good thing that happened with us. We are also busy establishing a partnership with a welding company uh, training center in Roslyn. So what we try is to, after grade 12, uh, if the learners go into the world, to make sure they do have uh, work and uh, not uh, uh, be in the position to start and look for uh, uh, for work. Uh, things that worries us a little bit. I see in the in the slideshow earlier today. Uh, if you look at the number of learner uh, total learners, and we had the same problem. If I can um, um, give an example, at my school last year, the grade twelves of uh, of last year uh, were sixty eight le uh, grade twelve learners. Five years when they. Uh, um, enroll in our school, they were 240 uh, to grade 12, 68. Uh, that is a problem. We started to have interviews with the parents to make sure the parents know what is a technical school. And I think all the technical principals has the same problem. It's not only me. Learners are placed in technical schools uh, just to have the learners in the school. Uh, and the moment they get to grade 10 and they reach grade 10 and now they must start choose a subject or specialized subject, uh, then the learners want geography or uh, life sciences, stuff like that, that we don't offer. And then the learners start uh, searching for other schools to, uh, for that subjects. We even have learners with us in grade 12, for instance, I have uh, learners uh, do, uh, goals. Uh, in the electrical uh, um, digital uh, workshop, uh, yeah, they struggle, but they they do they don't want to go to other workshops uh, because they 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 want, they go to electrical workshop is because they say to digital because they say it's a clean subject they don't want to dirty that that hand, their hands. In grade nine, when the learners uh, um, go 
th um, every five weeks they rotate to all the workshops. And uh, for instance, uh, the, the learners go come to the uh, motor workshop. They don't want to put their hands in the oil. Uh, if they went to the uh, uh, rotate and go to the welding workshop, the moment they start grinding and all that sparks, they refuse to go into that workshop. And that is because of learners that are placed in technical schools that don't belong in technical schools. We are grateful for the uh, pets in technical maths. I think that will help us this year a lot. Uh, but um, I think uh, if, if uh, the technical schools uh, can be seen as uh, and uh, registered as specialized schools, we can select the correct learners to come to technical schools so that they start as, for instance, 220 at, in grade eight and end in grade 12 as 210 or 200, and we maintain the amount of learners. Um, other thing, post-establishment, uh, which is still on 2019 learners, uh, in the last five year, years, our school doubled the total number of learners in the school. Um, uh, last uh, two years, we are almost 200 more. We are still on two, uh, 2019 post-establishment. That causes problems, as my previous uh, um, peers uh, said as well. Uh, for 1 to 15, 1 to 35, the difference there makes it very difficult in the workshops uh, to keep an eye on all the learners. So maybe teacher assistance could help a lot there. Um, and uh, a last thing that worries me a little bit is, and I know Porch do train technical teachers, but my question is, is that enough? Uh, University of Pretoria, as far as I know, uh, do train teachers, but not technical teachers. For instance, subjects like digital electronics. Uh, that is subjects, and uh, we offer all, all nine the subjects in our school, all the, all the technical subjects as well. But to replace teachers, certain subject teachers, like, for instance, digital electronics, is, it will be a difficult one. Uh, and uh, the other problem I, I experienced this year is uh, teachers uh, do their red seal, the N6, and then uh, I, uh, they go to SAIS, and then SAIS, there is a new system in SAIS since somewhere April this year, and um, the teachers, uh, the, they, they can't get their SAIS certificate because SAIS said it's not enough. That worries me because the previous year, the same uh, thing, just a different uh, teacher, they get that. So now with, with SAIS, it's a problem. So that causes a problem for, for us. Uh, but ma'am, thank you very much for the help uh, and uh, the assistance that GDE offers technical schools and uh, if they can look a little bit at specialized schools that, so that we can get the correct learners in our technical schools, as well as the, um, uh, the, the placement in the in admission process, uh, that will help a lot and will assist us a lot. I thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Pussy. Uh, are there any other members of uh, the schools or our different stakeholders? I mentioned a number of them earlier. I don't want to put anyone on the spot necessarily, um, but we really do want to hear from you. Um, so now is also another round where you can raise any of your thoughts or your ideas. I'm seeing Mr. George Sono. I'll note you in a moment. Um, but let's see, is there anybody else? Um, like I said, this is a safe space. This is a space where we want you to interact, where we want you to raise your issues and your concerns. Um, and it's really because we have a specific um, process um, in which we, we what, like I said, we have the focus intervention study, which is the specific process around technical schools and what we need to do to assist them. Um, in the meanwhile, I'm going to hand over firstly to uh, Mr. George Sono and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Good afternoon, honorable members. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Thanks. Okay. My name is George Sonon, the principal of Bokori Technical Secondary School in Atridgeville. Bokori Technical Secondary School, like uh, the previous uh, principals have alluded, we've got the same challenges, but uh, I'll mention those that are specific to Bokori Technical Secondary School. 
Boko has got uh, 1,171 learners. Of these learners, 709 are in grade 10 to 12. And then the streams that we're offering at Bokoni, it's civil, which is divided into woodworking and construction. It's electrical, which is power systems, and it's mechanical, which is welding. The challenge that we're having is the issue of space, as my uh, previous colleagues have alluded. As you know, that uh, as a, uh, in a workshop, there's a specific number that is needed to be uh, accommodated, but we find ourselves accommodating more learners. And then uh, secondly, Bukoni, where it is, is the only technical in Atlejwe. So most of the parents, they bring their learners to our school. The other problem we're having is they think that uh, it's a skills school whereby we don't do math, science, you know, things, things like that. And then uh, the type of learners that we get, you find that most of them, they end up being stuck maybe in grade 10 and it's a challenge. So as the previous speaker said that uh, if you can have maybe given an allowance of making sure that uh, we um, have a way or a, a test that we administer to cater for learners who are capable that will be able to meet the, or be able to do the subject that we are doing, we really appreciate that. Bukoni Technical Secondary School uh, appreciate the support that we are getting from the department, but as it was said, the challenge is uh, the pet material, more especially doing the welding uh, on the welding section. For the past year, the material in the welding section has increased immensely so. So it's a challenge because of lo a lot of learners want to do welding at school because of they see projects like bright stands and so forth that they take home. We are a quintal four school, a qu quintal four school, and most of our learners are not paying school fees because they come from the far west of Atridgeville where most of the parents are not working. And then the other problem we're having as a school, uh, we don't have a feeding scheme. Our feeder schools are primary schools where they are no, the learners are not paying school fees, and then they've got feeding schemes. But when they come to us, it's a different case altogether, and it becomes a challenge. And then also, we'd like to appreciate the support that we're getting from the district, the support that we're getting from the province. So I think in a nutshell, that is what we have at Bukoni. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sono. Um, I think we were there last week, if I'm correct, um, at your at your school. Um, let's go to the next one. Um, so why why did I say that? Particularly because we've also noticed some of those things. I'm actually looking at my notebook as you were speaking. I was paging back to some of the things that we saw last week. Um, Mr. J. R. Nkona from Moduri Technical. Let me hand over to you. You, you may speak, sir. Can, okay, can I check, am I audible? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Chapa. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, I don't know if maybe it's a technical difficulty. Mr. Nguyana, can you hear us? All right, let's see if we give him a moment. Um, maybe it's one of those technical challenges, uh, but Mr. Suno, thank you for your input. Um, like I said, very well noted and also very much aligns with some of the notes that we also have put across. Um, are there any other schools who want to make comment or want to add on to what's been said or want to register something, um, even if you're not uh, part of a school, but you're part of one of our interest groups um, or, or civil society members who are on this particular call, you are also welcome to raise your hand. Uh, today's session is specifically for our stakeholders, so that's what's important, making sure everyone's voices are heard. Um, you can also use the raise hand function and I will note you. Let's try one more time. Mr. Ngoyana from Moduri Technical, can you hear us? All right, I think we have a technical challenge there. 
But what I will do is if uh, Mr. Nguyena comes back on, um, I will hand over to him to speak after, uh, just so that we make sure that nobody um, um, is sort of left behind. If there aren't any other stakeholders who want to speak, I'm now going to open up for honorable members who might want to make comment. Um, honorable members, you'll note that the last few weeks we've visited a various uh, number of schools, um, including some that are here, some that are not. It's been quite a process, and I know our team has done quite extensive work um, in visiting these different schools as well. Honorable members, uh, can I note a round of hands from us? Um, you might also want to add in things. You also might want to supplement. You might want to refer back to some of your notes that you witnessed um, over the last few weeks and something you might add in. And like I said earlier, Mr. Nguyen, if you are able to um, speak, I will definitely note you and give you the opportunity to speak so that uh, you have your chance. Honorable members, anybody? I know it's been a long day. It's one of those over 12 hour working days for us. But if there isn't anything, I'm just trying to scroll to see if there's any hands. All right, I'm going to deposit one or two things, and uh, it's been a couple things that we have witnessed. I'm just getting my notebook over the last few weeks. The first is around resources and resources um, specific to the workshops that are in the, the different technical schools. Across the spectrum, we've seen, look, some schools do have equipment and that's great, but there are other schools that don't. And that's quite a worrying thing um, because we know, obviously, that having technical schools is a very hands on thing. It's a very tangible kind of teaching process. Um, and I think we need to zero in on that. So that's my first thing for the department. We need to have timelines with some of these different schools about when we're going to be giving them the kind of resource assistance. And if if not, why not? What's going on there? Um, I know that's a more long term thing, but I do want to register it now. So the department is aware that's sort of where our thinking is at. The other big thing that we keep seeing, and I think I did raise it in last week's meeting, is around the Section 21, fee paying, non fee pay, paying schools. Um, that being a very serious challenge um, and ensuring that we provide the right kind of support, even if the school um, is in an area that would not consider it to be um, a lower income area, we do find there are many learners. I mean, um, even today, there might have been a mix of, of learners who are in those schools, but we need to be providing support for those who don't have. Um, and that's a big one that I want to, to register. There was one more, and I think it has already been spoken to by some of our stakeholders, and that is specifically around how we assess and how we allocate learners to these technical schools. There's a huge potential for us to harness the power of technical schools, and I don't know if we've quite reached the potential of them. The one side is getting the right young people who are interested in it, but the other side is ensuring that there are internships, that there are job opportunities, that there are apprenticeships, um, that there are all sorts of opportunities after matric um, and beyond that. We know a big crisis of the country is youth unemployment. Gauteng, of course, will be one of the hardest hit by virtue of the fact that the center of the economy is here. And one of the ways we need to be addressing this is through skills, vocational um, and, and training sort of skills. And this is the first step in that direction. The other last question I wanted to add in is uh, at the beginning of our term as MPLs, one of the big things MEC had been speaking about was multiple certifications. Um, and one of those elements is by the time you get to matric, you need to have or you will have hopefully have had multiple certificates of different skills through that process. And I just want to get an update on that. Um, I see member Makubela, your hand is up. I'm going to give to you and then afterwards we'll go back to the department. Over to you, Member Makwela. No, thank you very much, Honorable Hassan. And, and perhaps maybe a special thanks to to the to our stakeholders who have joined us, um, as well as the, the school principals and also officials from from the schools who are here, the officials from the department and our ever hardworking uh, HOD of the department. <laughs> And I think I must mention that we, as a portfolio committee, um, we've spent almost the, the past month, or if not two months, just doing unannounced uh, visits to, 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 all the, to most of the technical schools in the length and breadth of, uh, of our province here in Houting. 
and I'm sure we would have touched in some of them. You would have already mentioned that <clears throat> we even went to my backyard in Atridgeville at the Bukoni Technical School. Um, and, and, and also visited some in, in different parts of the province. And it has been an eye opener. We've arrived in schools, maybe we must tell the department and maybe what, what we should do, uh, Honorable Hassan, is that perhaps this unannounced visit, at some, at some point we, we need to create a pathway where the department will retrace our steps when we have, where we have passed uh, uh, those schools that they follow up and, and, and perhaps address some of the issues that we encounter. There are technical schools that you go to that I've went through, that when you arrive there, you can almost see that this is a technical school. And there are technical schools where when you arrive, you realize that this is a by-the-way school. And, and, and I will try to, to actually explain what I'm trying to say. There are schools that you arrive, you are told the technical school, but there's nothing that says it's a technical school. And I'll, I'll give a list to the department uh, where there are no resources, the technical resources. Where, where I, we went to one technical school, I'll remember the name, in Eguruleni, where the, the lab and as well as the, the, the uh, what do they call it? They call it the, the workstations where they work from, the workshops. Where the work, there's no, the workshop, if when it rains, water comes in, um, there's nothing that says this place is a workshop. It's just a mess. And, and the rest of the things, um, it's just, you ask yourself, what is really happening? And I think there is a need because of the, the structure of our economy and, and the demands of the economy. And that's why our economy tends to employ mostly foreign nationals in the form of Zimbabweans. It does so because Zimbabwe is a country heavily invested in their technical schools, and that's why a 16-year-old from Zimbabwe can can has artisan skills. It's either that person can be can plumb, can be a plumber, can be an electrician, can be a motor mechanic, is good in in doing woodwork and all sorts of things. And that is because, um, we, we, despite all the failures of that particular government, its greatest strength has been to invest heavily in in that particular field. And I think that as a department. We need to start investing on that. We need to start spending most of our resources in doing that. We need to start taking money into ensuring that we we skill um, um, our people to have those particular skills. We need to also spend money, uh, um, uh, HOD and MEC, on, on demystifying this thing of technical schools. You know, when I grew up, we're told that those who went to Bukoni uh, technical schools were learners who had learn, learning disabilities or learners who were uh, mentally challenged or learners who could not uh, grasp math and science. And, and the reality is that the work in technical schools requires a technical, scientific and mathematical mind because with all those things, you will be able to then be a good artisan. But but these things have been inculcated and ingrained in the minds of parents and society to an extent that people even believe those things. And we need to be able to start dealing with that. Um, we, need to, we need to also ensure, uh, uh, Honorable Hassan, that in resourcing these schools, that we also, I don't understand, it, it, it just behooves me that technical schools, all, most of the technical schools in Haude, have no relationship with our sister departments. Why is the Department of, Inf uh, of uh, Infrastructural Development not working with the Department of Education in ensuring that the, it assists in terms of uh, resources as well as practical experience in the form of the work that DIT does in the maintenance of buildings, in the erection of buildings, and a lot of civil uh, 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 work that we do. Why are we not? Why is there no partnership with that department and our technical schools? Why is there no re no relationship between the department and te technical schools with the Department of Human Settlements, which builds a lot of houses and 
and that's a lot of uh, artisan uh, artis artisanry work, and in including the Department of Transport, which is building roads. And these are some of the things, uh, honourable members, that we need to to begin to to deal with. It's a it's a it's almost an abomination that you can have a, a, a Bokoni coming and saying that they don't even have a they don't even have a a, um, a feeding scheme. It's a it's a big problem. Because we have committed ourselves that no learner should go hungry. Bukoni comes and says they don't have a feeding scheme. And, and that issue must immediately be resolved. It should not be a matter that waits for us to be reporting it. We need to be able to deal with it. Bukoni is one of was one of the the, the best schools in Atridgeville. I don't know if Mr. Matopa is still there. He used to be uh, the principal there. One of the he used to win the, the award from the district every year is when I can remember when I was still in high school many years ago. Uh, it was one of the best performing, followed by Holy Trinity in, 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 in terms of mathematics and science. Also, I hear principals are raising the issue of admission, and it's a it's a it's a problem because we have created an online system. Yes, it's able to, to address a lot of issues. But what that online system does is that it then places learners who don't belong in technical schools in those schools. And as a result, those learners then begin to drag those who are supposed to be there down because they, they don't have interest of being there. Their mindsets are not set on, 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 on technical. Their goals don't even align with the, what the technical schools can do for them. But then we've just dumped them because a computer system has placed them there because they live adjacent or, or they, they don't live too far from the school. And this is something that we ought to be able to start addressing. We need to then be able find, to find a way Honorable, uh, uh, honorable uh, HOD, MEC, uh, and 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 honorable Hassan and members, that we find a way that that uh, that that system is able to be sensitive to a learner who is supposed to be in a technical school, and a learner who is supposed to go through uh, geography and other subjects. And these are some of the things we need to begin to deal with. We should be able to know from when a learner is in grade six or is in grade seven, why they are there. But that problem is not only compounded by that. The principal of Bukoni can attest that in the entire Atridgeville, there is only one technical school. Atridgeville has grown in leaps and bounds. When Bukoni was built, that school was enough to cater for, 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 for the whole township. But that school is the only technical school in a township with a population of more than 1.2 million people living there. That's how big Atridgeville has become. When Bukonu was built, the Lotus Gardens as a township was not there. When Bukonu was built, Mshongoville was not there. When Bukonu was built, Extension um, uh, 7, Extension 6, as well as Oliven, they were not there. But to, uh, Bukoni as a whole, is 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 built uh, to cater for all the learners of Atrivi. It's not possible. You go to Mamelodi, the same one technical school in the entire um, in the entire Mamelodi, a, a community of more than 1.4 million people. You go to Soweto, the same in Soweto alone. I think there's about two or three uh, uh, technical uh, high schools. It's not happening. You go to 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 Harangua, Mudiri is the only technical high school that is catering for learners from Winterfeld, learners from Mabopane, learners from Harangua, and and uh, and learners in, in from the surrounding areas. We need to be able to start investing in building technical uh, high schools. Uh, uh, HOD, let's spend money in building these technical high schools at least. A township must have three technical high schools if we are to then start speaking about meeting the skills challenges that face us. And then we need to be able to create a welding link, not only with our internal sister departments, but also with our TVET colleges and see how we can be able to marry our technical high schools with, this, uh, with, the, with TVETs. 
Uh, thank you very much. Those are the issues I wanted to raise. Thank you. Um, thank you. I see we have another stakeholder, uh, Mr. Andrew Kudakwashe. I'm going to hand over to you. Could you also introduce yourself and tell us where you're from and which school? Thanks. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Chair, uh, and uh, all protocol observed. My name is uh, Mr. Uh, A.K. Dube. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Africa Disability Alliance. Uh, we are based here in Pretoria. Um, now, I raised my hand, Chair, to uh, thank the Department of Education and the principals that are here for the great work that they are doing. And to raise the, con uh, the concern that we have about inclusive quality education schools. Uh, we have been working on a, on a program that was uh, generously supported by the First Rand Foundation, uh, which looks at uh, how children with disabilities can progress from primary to secondary to uh, te the technical schools that we are discussing now. And after many years of following uh, this program, it occurred to us that we needed a, an approach, which we now call a, an ecosystems approach, where it's not enough uh, to say that uh, children come to school and they are supposed to learn and do better, when they, whereas they come from households uh, that are uh, very, very poor, and sometimes they have to, look, uh, to walk very long distances to come to school, the school environment itself is not accessible. The teachers are enthusiastic, but they don't have support. So we would like to uh, call and request the Department of Education in Gauteng to partner with us on this ecosystems approach. Because with this approach, we are willing to take a school and go with it for as long as it takes to make sure that the school environment and that the learning environment of the child is improved for the better. At the moment, uh, the, the schools are not accessible, the curriculum is not accessible, the teachers, uh, they don't have tools. And we want to uh, partner with the department and say, let's make sure that, for instance, blind children uh, who have never seen a cat, how can we uh, uh, bring about materials and books where they can feel uh, and read Braille and see what a cat looks like? and feel what a, a cat looks like. So we, we are really, really into uh, tangible things that can help children and make sure that uh, their learning environment uh, takes them through to technical schools. Lastly, Chair, you may be interested to know that one of our research found out that some children with, with disabilities are being failed, so to speak, the word that even if they pass, they are failed in order for them to remain in the education system. Because if they, there is no progression, even if they pass, they can't go up. So we would like to call upon um, uh, the Department of Education and indeed our portfolio committee to thank you for this opportunity and say, let us prioritize uh, the inclusive education sector. We are willing to bring our expertise, our knowledge, our evidence base to make sure that the schools in Houting, at least, that those schools are able to be supported for them to, to perform better. That's the only few things that I wanted to say, uh, Chair. I, I, I appreciate the opportunity to attend this session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dube. That's well noted. We appreciate that input. Um, I think we've also in the past, and I think it's something we're going to be looking at, uh, we've done an FIS into special schools so that particularly learners who are differently able, um, and that's also been a focus in the past, but I acknowledge fully what's, uh, what's being said and what we need to do. And um, yeah, I think it's quite a big space. Um, just before I give over to the department, I really want to stress 
um, to our schools, particularly the technical ones, to send through their presentations or reports. Um, even if you write something up, you can please, please send it to us. This is important because it's going to go into what we call resolutions of the committee. And those resolutions are then tracked by us and by the legislature. Um, and really what it does is it enables us to zero in on an issue and ensure that the department is able to respond and able to give us feedback and able to really deal with that issue at hand. Um, and when that's sent to us, it means that it goes into the public record. And it also means that we are in a space in which uh, we can actually enact our oversight duties a lot more particularly. So I'm really going to stress that to our stakeholders to please, 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 especially in fact our schools um, to send us those reports of the different elements and your presentations um, and that will go into our resolutions um, okay this is the very last hand i'm taking because of also time i see the ellc intern so i don't have a name to acknowledge uh, but let's hand over to the equal education law center if you can also introduce yourself so we know who we're speaking to thanks um thanks chair um greetings to the honorable members and the stakeholders that are part of this um, engagement and also the principals in the meeting. Um, I'm Yulisa Piliso I'm from the Equal Education Law Center. Um, so I'm standing to um, to ask just one question, um, Chair. Um, firstly, we'd like to, we'd like to appreciate this platform and um, to having had the honesty of the school principals um, tabling their concerns. Um, we're truly appreciative of that. Um, so one, the one, one question that I would, I'd like to ask is um, in the presentation which has been presented by the TB, I mean the GDE, there's an indication of um, the fact that there are only 120 school technical schools in the province. And um, with the current um, general education certificate which is being piloted, um, that would give us um, um, an assumption that there is a high number of an anticipated learners that might form part of the technical um, sector. Um, so is there any plan by the for like by the GDE to increase the number of um, technical um, high schools and within the province? Um, that's all. Um, so thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, to our colleague from the Equal Education Law Center. I think that's a big one that we're also looking at, and that's exactly why we've chosen um, our FIS to be specific on technical skills. Um, DDG Cheney, can I hand over to you for, for some response, some acknowledgement about what some of the issues that have been raised, uh, or who else in your team is going to be... Uh, yeah, I think I'll start with you, actually, then you'll take us through. Over to you, DDG. Oh, you're a bit soft. One moment, DDG. We can see you very well, but for some reason, it's not uh, the sound we are used to from you. Not so well. Could you maybe try? Maybe you're too far from the mic. Can I check that? Maybe, hold on, maybe it's me. Um, team, am I the only one who is not hearing DDG well, or is it everybody? No, it's all of us, Chairperson. We also can't hear DDG. All of us, please. So, just... It's a little soft, DDG. Let's try, maybe speak a little bit. Let's see. Um, I think. Uh... Okay, can I suggest something, DDG? I'm going to suggest that somebody else in your team start the response. You log out of the meeting and log back in. I think that might be able to deal with it because ordinarily we don't have problems, or technical problems from you. So I think it might just so be... I, 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 I picked up the problem. Hello, can yes. you hear me now? Perfectly. Uh, yeah, uh, there was a bit of a setting on my side. Uh, my apologies for that. Uh, Chair, I'm going to ask uh, my, my colleagues to also assist me in, in the responses, but I will, I'll make some broad statements uh, up front. Uh, firstly, I think uh, I'm sure from your, your own oversight, uh, sorry, uh, good afternoon to the chairperson, honorable members, uh, the principals and, and colleagues from technical high schools and stakeholders and my colleagues as well. Uh, Chair, the the 
issues that have been raised uh, both from the committee and from uh, the principals uh, are issues that we, we have been trying to grapple with. Uh, I think there's a bit of a history behind it. So firstly, uh, there is a, a policy void. And I think a, a number of the principals have raised this, uh, that, that in terms of the South African Schools Act, uh, we do not have a, a definition of a technical high school anymore uh, since its introduction in 1996. Uh, the, the assumption then was that uh, when we get to grade 10, uh, learners would leave uh, the, the public ordinary school system or the ordinary school system uh, and progress to TVET colleges to complete uh, a technical and vocational qualification. Uh, subsequent, we, we knew for a fact that a lot of the, uh, um, the enrollment conditions at, at technical uh, and at TVET colleges were high. Uh, which excluded grade grade nine learners from progressing to technical colleges. Uh, and at that point, uh, uh, we, we then started the process of reaffirming technical high schools in, in, the, in the public school sector. Uh, and that's when we also had the recapitalization grants kicking in, was with a view to, to bring in technical high schools uh, back into the fold to ensure that there was progression of learners from grade nine to a technical and vocational education. Uh, subsequently, uh, or as a result of that, uh, currently we don't, do not have norms and standards for the school funding uh, aspect of technical schools, so they fall under uh, the provisions for public ordinary schools. Uh, in respect of uh, HR provisioning, uh, the norms and standards for, for personnel, uh, we also have a a reference in the public administration measures, which are the regulations related to uh, uh, personnel, uh, but it is not substantive in any particular way. The admissions policy is still aligned to uh, ordinary schools. Uh, and I think to a large extent, uh, what we've been able to do in Gauteng is to move uh, with, with some kind of policy pro proposals to DBE uh, for, for the reintroduction uh, of technical high schools as a, as a class of schools, uh, as well as the introduction of schools of specialization, which at the national level is called uh, focus schools. Uh, but at the same time, there is no secondary policy and resourcing policy kicking in. So in Gauteng, what we've been doing is we have been supplementing uh, the subsidy through uh, uh, additional LTSM, the, the materials for the practical assessment tasks, uh, the equipment that we've been providing even after the grant uh, had been terminated, uh, was basically as a way of affirming uh, these class of schools. So uh, I think um, Member Makubela's uh, uh, observation uh, that, that a large number of these schools or a number of these schools uh, the look and feel of the school doesn't tell you it's a technical school. Uh, and, and it means us having to reposition these schools because since 1996 and, and predominantly in townships, uh, these schools were progressively becoming public ordinary schools uh, with the offering of technical subjects and no longer being technical schools. Uh, and I think what we're trying to do now is to reverse those particular aspects. I think the one aspect, and I think the, the chairperson raised it, uh, and I think it was an issue also in the previous meeting, is the issue of Section 21, uh, the issue of no fee fee. Uh, the, the determination uh, of, of uh, schools uh, is based on quintile ranking that is determined, uh, the percentages of which is determined by the minister together with national treasury. They will tell us that 12% uh, of Gauteng learners should be in quintile one, 13% uh, in quintile two, 40% uh, in quintile four, and so on. Now, in the amendment to the norms and standards, they then allowed the MECs not to change the quintile, but to change the status of a school from fee to no fee on condition 
that the school governing body, after consulting the parents, applied to have their status changed to no fee. So if we if we take the the uh, school uh, that that indicated that they were um, still a, a on um, basically a quintile four school, uh, the question we would have to ask is: Are they still a a fee charging school uh, or a no fee school? And if they have applied for a no fee status, um, chairperson and members. Uh, we, we, we have decided to automatically grant them the status of no fee. Uh, and, and then, even though the school is not part of the conditional grant for nutrition, we have got a special allocation from the provincial treasury to give them all the benefits that they would have had uh, as a no fee school under the, the, the grants. Uh, so so uh, we will ask the principal to contact us or the school to indicate that they would want to change their status. Uh, there is a circular that's been issued on how to, to uh, prepare the, the, the resolution and, and motivation. Uh, and then we are able to re reclassify the school uh, virtually from the next uh, academic year uh, moving forward. Chair, the admissions policy is also in that similar vein, as, as I indicated, and I think uh, what the principles have raised, and I think what we will take back with us, is that in, in the case of admissions, uh, because they were part of the ordinary school sector in terms of the broader uh, policy description, uh, I'm sure we would have determined uh, feeder zones for all of them based on local demand rather than them having to serve a broader need in the community. Uh, and it is something that we would have to look into. Uh, and I think we may have to look at introducing uh, provincial legislation uh, for the recognition of technical high schools to affirm uh, the resourcing levels at the, at the appropriate level. Uh, I think for me that to, to a broad extent uh, is the issues uh, there, there are a lot of new things that they've, they've raised uh, that, that I think we would have to consider. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking aloud, uh, Chair, is that, you know, if we're providing uh, the equipment for the, for the, for the workshops, uh, I don't see why do we, ha we have to do outright purchase. Uh, I think a lease agreement with a maintenance portion attached to it uh, would allow that, that equipment to stay uh, up to date and current. Uh, while it is under the lease, and it's something that we're going to have to look at uh, moving forward rather than outright purchase, because outright purchase will result in obsolescence, uh, and we would not be in a position to, to manage uh, the replacements at, at the levels that we would need to. Uh, I think, Chair, that uh, I'm going to ask if my colleagues want to <clears throat> add, add to the issues. Um, and I think uh, if, if I saw the Director for Teacher Development here, uh, if she can pick up on the in-service training uh, that is being offered uh, as we speak. Chair, maybe just the last point to, uh, I think it's Mr. A.K. Dube from the Disability Alliance. I think uh, if he can just leave his number on the chat line, uh, I think we would like to engage him on, on the developments in our special schools, which is aligned to the thinking that he, he had presented in the meeting and, and to look at what opportunities they are. Um, DDG, Rufus, um, directors, chief directors, if there's anything that you want to add, you can just put up your hand uh, and I'm sure the chair will recognize you. Uh, thanks, thanks, DDG. Anyone else from the department? I know that some of these issues were a bit new. I see Mr. Mpofu. You can go ahead. Uh, good, good afternoon. Um, Chairperson, members of the committee, stakeholders, and my colleagues from the department. Uh, I think Mr. Shani has uh, dealt with the issue that I wanted to raise, but just to indicate that I've already uh, interacted with um, uh, Mr. Mr. Sona for the Bukhoni issue relating to the feeding at the school. I think um, the issue is, as indicated by, by TTG Chani, uh, relates to the no fee and fee paying schools, uh, fee paying schools. But in terms of the uh, national schools uh, nutrition uh, program, uh, we do allow 
um, schools to, to apply. And therefore, we, if they are not part of the one to three uh, quintile schools, we have got a funding through the uh, equitable share that we can look at. Indeed, it is important that uh, the issue of learners, more especially from the um, disadvantaged backgrounds, uh, should uh, also be should also be allowed to apply for the for the for the grant the conditional grant that deals with the feeding um, program in our schools. So we are already interacting. I've had a chat with him uh, even um, as we're in the meeting uh, using the normal electronic uh, processes to deal with that. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thanks. I see Ms. Um, uh, Nadine Potter, and I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you, Chairperson. Just to indicate on the multi-certification skills program, we have 53 learners who are to start their training in next week on plumbing, which will then be accredited by the Plumbing Association. And those learners will then indeed uh, get a certificate, an accredited certificate for that. They come from nine of our schools, six learners per school, um, but we will provide further details on the others. But that is one that is about to kick off now in, in support of the multi-certification skills program. Thank you. And also through, through our Cyborna and other partners, we are busy with other types of multi certification skills programs as well. They're not only limited to the technical schools. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, DDG Rufus. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and good afternoon to uh, honorable members and stakeholders. Just to echo the, 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 the statements made by DDG Albert, when it comes to post establishment or staff establishment for these technical schools, Indeed, they are classified as public ordinary schools, and there's no special uh, post provisioning for these schools, which is somehow a disadvantage to them, given their technical nature. But I must indicate that uh, in terms of the challenges which are raised by the principals in terms of their establishing staff provisioning being based on the 2019 uh, learner numbers, that I think is uh, uh, being attended to. Uh, I can confirm that over the last two weeks, my team have been on the ground, uh, and even today I got a report that our OD team have been with the Pretoria uh, uh, management to deal with issues of uh, staffing in that particular school, and it's an ongoing process which we need to uh, deal with. But these schools, uh, from policy perspective, they are, they are still allocated uh, posts on the basis of being ordinary schools rather than being uh, special schools uh, in their technical nature. Thank you. Thank you, DDG. I see, um, and I'm apologizing if I don't get the, the title correctly in terms of um, position at the department. Um, but Ms. Charlotte Shirindi, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Uh, good afternoon, uh, honorable members of the Portfolio Committee and all protocol observed. In terms of teacher development in the department, we are offering reskilling and upskilling programs for both technical occupational subjects for special schools as well as the technical vocational subjects for the technical schools. In actual fact, the closing date for the applications was on the 31st of August 2021. For these reskilling and upskilling programs, we are catering for both the short programs or skills programs, as well as the full programs with the higher education institutions. So I am hoping the principals uh, have encouraged the teachers, you know, to, to apply for these reskilling and upskilling programs. But furthermore, in terms of the supply 
for our initial teacher education programs, that is through the Funza Lushaka Bazari scheme. We are also prioritizing the technical occupational subjects as well as vocational subjects in terms of uh, the student teachers that want to get into the teaching profession. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Shirindi. Anyone else from the department? I see uh, DDG Chani. Go ahead. Uh, I think just the response to equal education uh, that that the 120 technical schools is heading to uh, 120 schools offering technical subjects, but are not necessarily full technical schools. Uh, our objective is to expand the distribution of technical uh, schools and schools of specialization. Uh, and I think we're going to have to have at some point some discussion with the principals as well as the uh, head office policy, uh, curriculum policy uh, officials on, on what is the difference between a technical school and a school of specialization. Uh, but I think the, the indirect uh, request from the schools was uh, if we could uh, basically give them uh, the, the necessary or equivalent resources, but also the, the status. Uh, Chair, I think uh, from your visits, and I'm sure the principals would have informed you uh, that, the, that the, the academic uh, uh, demand of the subjects that are deemed to be technical are actually uh, applied maths and applied science. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, the technical high schools, as we used to remember them, uh, is currently attracting the wrong learners in terms of, of uh, acumen, uh, and we're going to have to deal with that uh, in, in preparation for the next admission cycle uh, in order to correct uh, how we deal with that. Um, I think we are going to go through a process of relooking at our admissions policies. Uh, and we may be in a position to also look uh, at similar uh, learner talent identification process uh, that we have in schools of specialization uh, and also apply it to, to the technical high schools. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks, thanks, DDG. Um, I know also some of these responses and some of the things that have also been heard uh, will have been the first time maybe perhaps that the department uh, we've interacted with some of these things not all but some um so we know that we're still going to have you coming to discuss some of these things with us in a bit more detail um also and that's why i'm i'm, I'm saying to our schools and other other stakeholders um to please send us those presentations um and those reports from your school so that we can formally put them into our um, resolution tracking process and that means we can ensure that there's continuous follow-up and that there's a lot of information. Um, I'm also glad to hear about the um, section 31 applications because we were under the impression that it takes a lot longer. Um, so to hear that, that it's a little bit easier I think especially for Bukhoni it will be quite quite useful. Um, with that I'm going to say thank you to everybody. Um, I'm going to hand over in just a moment um, to Honorable De Santos. He's going to do the vote of thanks for us. Um, but I just want to say before I do that, um, we really do appreciate uh, our stakeholders coming through, speaking to us. We know that this is not the end of the process. Um, it's merely a continuation. And we're hoping to be able to continue this kind of working relationship um, as, a, as a group. Honorable De Santos, can I hand over to you? Oh, yeah, acting chair. Sorry about that. Trying to take it off mute. Um, acting chair, uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to deliver this vote of thanks. Um, I think you've done a fantastic uh, job um, chairing today on behalf of our chairperson, um, as you always do. Um, but mostly importantly, I would like to thank all the respected stakeholders that, um, that took time today. Um, to attend the stakeholder session, um, all the honourable members that participated today, as well as all the oversight visits that um, has taken um, place over this past month. Um, and most importantly, and I think in my view, the, the fantastic work 
that the committee officials have done um, in terms of the preparations for all the off-site visits leading up to this uh, session today and obviously the preparations for this uh, specific session. I think it was a uh, fantastic um, input that we received today. Um, I'd also like to thank the MEC and the department for their participation, not only in today, but um, also their willingness um, to assist and address the committee concerns um, in, in, in all matters um, in, in um, our committee, which is a great thing to, to have the MEC and the education um, committee at the department um, so helpful. Uh, to us. So it's, it's really, really great and we look forward to continued work with them. Um, but that's it from my side. I'd just like to, to thank everyone again, um, especially for you, Chair, and to wish everyone a good weekend and for everyone to keep safe. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Honorable DeSantos. That's much appreciated. Um, in terms of the way forward and closure, like I said, we're very appreciative. Um, this is not the end of the line. Uh, it's definitely going to be something that we follow up with and we continue. Um, you do have the contact details of our team um, in the committee. So please, please continue to uh, utilize that. But also where there's outstanding documents and outstanding issues, please feel free to reach out. Our job as the portfolio committee is to assist you, to assist our schools, to assist our stakeholders, our learners. Um, and it's a really big part of what we need to do. Um, and that's also why today has been very important and also why I allowed everybody and continuously ask stakeholders to 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 make inputs and to speak and that's really appreciated um so what we're going to do in terms of way forward is expect some of those reports and uh, uh presentations we'll then put them in our resolutions uh and then when the feedback also comes perhaps it's something we can also do via email but of course uh, to the department in ddg chani um there's a couple of things there that we need to follow up on quite a few actually um and i think we also need to make sure that we are quite sharp um in our uh, feedback process but also in a way that we responding in a, in a very timeless fashion. We don't want our schools to be sitting here and then six months from now, nothing still. So let's also commit to some timelines in that regard. Um, and let's also make sure that we are doing everything we can um, to ensure that our, our schools and our stakeholders are taken care of. Uh, thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it um, to those who've joined us. Uh, I want to I want to release the department and our stakeholders, but I just want to check. We have another meeting us as the portfolio committee, so actually I can't release the department. Um, and I want to ask and plead with honourable members that we start at half past five, um, so that we also finish a little earlier. So if we can all log on to the other link, um, that's honourable members in the department, so that we can get our meeting going, um, and that we can actually get also into some of the nitty gritty of the. Of, of the job that we were elected to do. But thank you so much to our schools uh, and to our stakeholders. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Can I check honorable members? Are we fine with half past five? Latest. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah well, 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 OK, thank you. Yeah, let's start earlier so that we're also not sitting here till 9, 10 p.m. Otherwise, uh, who, yeah. said, who's, who is Sergio? Is it Sergio Ramos? <laughs> No, no, it's better than Sergio Ramos. And then Sergio Busquets. <laughs> no, no, even better than him. No, it's Sergio, <laughs> Sergio Money Lover. It's Sergio Money Lover. <laughs>